We are covering how to use Blender to create a 3D shape with a jelly aesthetic to it. And don't worry if you're a beginner because I am too and I got you with every single step. Hey everyone, my name is Afra and yes, I know it's been a while since I posted. I feel like I open every video saying that. So yeah. I don't really have any more excuses to give, so let's just get right into it. I wanted to catch up with you all on Dream Chapter Studio, my shop, and introduce something new that I've been working on. Yes, we are back with the journals. I'll probably do a studio vlog once I have all the shapes released, and yes, there are more designs to come, so subscribe so you don't miss it. And you can also find me on here and here. And as you can see from these journals, we have something unique going on here. We have a butterfly, a bow, a heart, and a cherry, but with an added 3D texture to it. And I'm not sure if this is like a jelly aesthetic or like a transparent aesthetic, clear glass aesthetic, like whatever this feels to you, you let me know in the comments. But I wanted to add something unique and add some like dimension to my designs. Okay, so this is all going to go down on Blender. Blender is a free 3D software that you can use to create all sorts of things. Like, I think you can create movies on here. Like, it's pretty intense. But the Blender community is awesome with so many tutorials out there that are also free, by the way. And I also want to contribute to the Blender community with this tutorial as a thank you. About six months ago, I decided that I wanted to up my art and design skills and explore 3D art using Blender. I think I was only able to create these awesome 3D designs from these three videos. I'll have these videos linked in the description if you want a more detailed instruction or tutorial on those channels. So in this video, we are going to cover a full tutorial on how to create this cute 3D cherry. So let's get started. So some might call this lazy, some might even call this complicated, but I call this just my approach. And quite frankly, this is just how I learned it from one of the other tutorials that I mentioned. So I like to draw my object onto my iPad and convert it into an SVG file. And you do not need to do this on your iPad. You can also just draw it and then like find an SVG converter somewhere. The point is you want to have your drawing and you want it to have a transparent background so you can upload it onto Blender. Okay, so on my iPad, here is a time lapse of me perfecting my cherry drawing. And then I sent the drawing over to Adobe Illustrator where I am able to convert the drawing into an SVG file. So make sure you got the shape with no white background to it. Like it needs to be transparent. That's ultimately the point of this. Awesome. So we are ready to bring this over to Blender. Okay. When you open Blender, you're going to see this cube. You're just going to delete it. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Import your SVG file onto Blender and scale it up. Press the letter S on your keyboard and then use your mouse to drag and make your image bigger. I'm just adding color here so you can see, but you can wait to do color later. And I'm just going to lift this shape up and kind of have it centered in. And you can also look at the side menu there with like XYZ, kind of like where like my shape is on the map or graph. And you can follow along that way as well. Okay, so next you're gonna click on the shape that you wanna make 3D. You're gonna click on this like green icon. I think it's like the curve icon, but you can see on my screen where that is. So you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna see geometry and there is an option, the second one, and says extrude. So I like to mess around with this a little bit before and just kind of see where things land. The extrude option is basically what is going to make your shape turn into 3D. So play around with this and see like how big, how bubbly you want your shape to be. And this is going to be like your base. And we're going to shape this to make it look more round looking next. But before, if you want to make it more round and soft looking, you are going to need to convert your shape into a mesh. And then you're going to go into add a modifier and click remesh. So then you're going to get this like modifier called remesh. I have no idea what it means. I just know you need to do this step in order to do the next step. So I have the voxel size here and you click apply and it should all be okay. It's going to like scrunch up randomly and then it will pop back out. I learned this step from another tutorial. So that's why I don't really have all the reasonings as to why, but I know from experimenting that you really need to put that step first. Okay, so now that we have made our shape 3D looking, now we are ready to make it more, you know, soft and realistic looking, not so blocky. If you want this blocky aesthetic, then you can totally stop here. I think you're good to go. But if you want to move on to sculpting, we are all prepared for it. So you're going to click on the shape that you want to work with and then click the sculpting tab. You can see on the left side, there are all these buttons. These are like brushes that you can use to begin sculpting. 
I really like using the smooth tool and I think right now I'm using the fill tool, but you can mess around with these. There's really like no right or wrong way to do this. This part is totally free form to how you want to do it. So I'm looking at photos of cherries just so I remember exactly how the shape looks like and not what's in my imagination because sometimes it can get a little cartoony. So I wanted to make sure it's a little realistic looking and I am just sculpting away. I really love the sculpting part of the whole 3D process because it's way more intuitive. It's less like numbers and settings and it's more like free form. So I really like this part. And I'm using my mouse to kind of turn things around. If you want to get these like beginner, like how to like navigate Blender, I really think that donut tutorial is good to get like an initial tour. But for now, you can just copy some of the settings I have and hopefully you can follow along. So now that we have the fruit of the cherry completed, let's work on the stem. As you can see, the smooth tool is kind of helping and get rid of those edges. And again, I'm sure there's like a more technical way to go about this. I'm just kind of going with what I know and what feels more intuitive. Blender is a type of software where you can use a lot of like um, shortcuts and like methods to go about things. So I'm pretty sure you could make this around in a different way, but let's be honest. I don't have, I don't have a lot of time to learn all of that. I just feel like I want to create and be like in the artistic mode of things. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. But like I said, Blender, you can make movies on Blender. Like if you really want to learn it, I say like, go for it. You can master it. I guess I'm just like not there at the moment. Like I said before, this can kind of be like a shortcut way or a more complicated way, depending on where you're at on Blender in your 3d journey. But yeah, and lastly of the cherry shape, we have the leaf. And so I'm using the inflate tool because I want the leaf to kind of like puff out a little bit, which I didn't really get in the extrude option in the beginning. And then after that, I'm using the smooth tool just to make things look right. We got our shape. We got our 3D cherry shape. All right. Let's do the next part of this tutorial, the jelly texture that I've been talking about so much. I am making a plain background because I realized through trial and error, like if you want to see how transparent the texture is, you need a background to kind of see that better. Okay, and finally, we are at the jelly transparent effect of this whole tutorial. So you want to click on your shape and you want to change the metallic setting, the transmission setting, the alpha setting, and then lastly, you need to scroll down and put blend mode into alpha hashed. And of course you need to put the render engine into cycles. So you can see I'm working on the stem part and also the leaf part. And I'm just kind of zipping through with the settings that I want because I messed with it enough to know exactly what I need. So you can also copy my same numbers if you want, or you can kind of mess with it too. This is the last and most important step. It's lighting and I don't know how to master it. But you need lighting to show like how transparent your object is, right? Because you need light to shine through it or shine from behind it. And I just add a bunch of lights until I get what I want. Um, I add the sun version, there's spotlight, like things like that, point lights. I just kind of put them all over this like map or this grid until I see what I like, get the exact shine that I want. You know, like you can see like there's like a shine on the leaf, on like the cherry part. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have a tutorial for the light part because I myself need a tutorial on how to master lighting so right now it's pretty ad hoc and diy and that's how you do it so once you're finished you like what you see based on your camera view you can click render and see what kind of image you end up getting and hopefully it's something that you like like i said i've been doing this kind of like trial and error basis and there's been many times i'll hit render and i don't like what i see then i have to add more light or like mess with the settings a little bit more i like to take my shape over to canva at the end just to adjust the brightness a little bit more because ultimately there's only so much lighting i can add i feel like i have like 50 lights in my blender project i don't know if that's normal i like to go on canva and upload it as like a photo and then look at the brightness look at the color the saturation and just make sure it's exactly how i want it and on canva you can also download it as a transparent file so that definitely helps and there you have it. We created a 3D cherry from start to finish. 
I know that was kind of like a quick summary, so I can't really say it was a beginner's tutorial. There's definitely a lot more that you can learn from the tutorials that I mentioned before, but I wanted this to kind of be like a summary, a put together of all like that I learned and how I created this. And in my case, I wanted to add this 3D cherry art onto a journal. So here's a little look at some of the journals that I have that are added to my shop, Dream Chapter Studio. I also have this 3D jelly aesthetic in a butterfly, bow, and heart as well. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope it encourages you to start learning 3D art if you ever felt intimidated like me and hopefully I get to add more tutorials to help us all along the way. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.